Hi, this is Theo from Parkablocks.com. Today I want to show you the Epson V39 flatbed scanner. So I bought this one for the office as well in addition to the other Canon scanner that I've been using. So I want to try out something different. This time I bought the Epson one. So this is an affordable entry level scanner. Uh, so I've already checked out the quality. I'm going to show it to you later on in the video. But let's take a look at the design of the scanner. This is a very slim scanner, very thin. And there's a kickstand that is built just at the back. However, um, I don't scan with the kickstand like that. Because if I'm scanning sketchbooks, um, the sketchbook will not stay in place, of course. This scanner is powered by a USB cable. The USB cable is actually the same cable that I use to charge my handphone and also the Kindle so I don't have to have so many spare cables around. That is very good. This is the inside. So, um, oh, you can actually remove the lid if you want to scan bulky stuff like um, a very thick sketchbook or whatever you want. So you can actually remove this. You cannot remove it uh, with the Canon scanner. So this is a nice feature. However, you can still scan thick books if you want to, just that uh, with the Canon scanner, the lid has to be up like that. Oh, there are some additional buttons here as well. For example, um, you can scan into a PDF directly. You can scan to the cloud, scan to a printer. And what is this? Scan to an email. Yep. So um, let's try and use this and see how it performs. I will be scanning the same page that I use for the Canon scanner review so that I can get a comparison. Before you can use the scanner, you have to install the drivers. So the driver is provided in the CD inside. I've already installed the driver. And the software to use is called Epson Scan. This is quite an old software because there's an even older scanner in my office and it uses the exact same software and the interface is exactly the same as well. So um, there are some features here. This is the professional mode. You can also go with for the full auto mode, but of course you are a professional, you want to scan in the professional mode. So let's try and scan and see how fast the scanner is. The scanner is scanning now. The technology behind the scan is called the Contact Image Sensor CIS. So it scans quite fast. Let's take a look at the result. Let me open the file and compare it to the sketchbook. So that is the scan and this is the sketchbook. I think the scan is a bit saturated, just a by a tiny notch. Other than that, the reproduction is quite good. I can capture all the detail, including the green of the watercolor paper. However, the scanner also uh, is not able to pick up areas where the paper is off the surface. So when it comes to scanning watercolor, if the paper buckles and leaves off the surface of the glass, you will get something like this. So this part where it's all white, the scanner wasn't able to pick up any detail because the paper is off the surface of the glass and this part is alright because you can still see the detail. One thing I want to talk about is the software. You can only scan using the scanner using the Epson scan software and I'm not able to do that with the image capture provided by Mac OS so here it says that it cannot communicate with the scanner because the scanner isn't detected. With the Canon Light 220, I was able to plug in the USB cable and image capture can detect the scanner, but not so for the Epson. So you have to use their own software. 
Overall, I find the Epson V39 to be a very good scanner. It's affordable and well worth the money. It can capture high levels of detail. I can actually scan up to 4,800 DPI, but for my purposes, I usually just scan 300 to 400 DPI. If I want to compare this to the Canon Lite 220 that I'm using at home, I would say I prefer the Canon scanner because I find that the scan is a tiny bit closer to the original. Um, but however, you can do many color tweaks with the Epson scan software like this. You can do go inside and change the color balance, the contrast, brightness, the histogram and many things. However, the downside is you are doing this adjustment blind. That means you have to type in a number and then scan and see whether or not your result matches the adjustment. If it doesn't match, you have to readjust again, scan, readjust again, scan. It's very tedious. So for me, I would just scan and then adjust it in Photoshop, whether it's with the Epson or with the Canon scanner. And while I'm comparing the Epson and the Canon, well, the difference is not very big, it's not significant. So depending on where you are buying the scanners, if, it, if the Epson is much cheaper, well, say just go for the Epson because you can only see the difference when you are comparing the two scanners side by side uh, in terms of the scan quality. So that's all for my video review today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section, I will answer them. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, do so for more sketching tips, techniques, art product reviews and more. So thanks for watching and have a nice day. See you in the next video.